Hi, this is Melanie from Hook to the Left, and today we will be learning how to create this bookmark. It's a nice and fun bookmark, and you can make it in any different colors that you like. But let me, let's go ahead and get started. This bookmark project, you are going to need a DK or three weight yarn, which I used for these two, I used, this is not the same colorway, but I used the Man mandala yarn and on this one I did do um, controlled color that at least down on the tassels I didn't do it through uh, through here I didn't do a controlled coloring here colorway here but I did do it on the tassels so that um, I brought in some of the gray and, and they just went the way that I wanted them to and I was towards the end of the um, that particular ball or cake of yarn so it worked out well for me um, and then for this one, which is the same one that we're going to be using here, I used Karen Cupcakes yarn, um, which they show a lot of hat uh, patterns and stuff. They, they assume that you're going to use it for a hat. You don't have to use it for what the label suggests. Um, you can use it for something else. Like in this particular case, we're going to use it to make a bookmark. Again, we are using it, uh, it's all three, it, whatever you can find in weight, weight three yarn. And I will tell you on these cupcakes, there are chunky cupcakes. So just be careful if you plan on, if you buy something like this with the intent of making a bookmark, uh, make sure that it is the one that is a three weight. You are also going to need a set of yarn needles. This is to weave your ends in. It also may help a little bit with the fringes. I tend to use a hook for this, but some people use the needles. So these are my favorite type of yarn needles, and I will link them down below if you are interested in checking those out. I love their flexible large eye, and then a thin shaft so that it can get through my stitch work easily. Um, you also need a pair of scissors. These are traveling scissors that came with a crochet kit that I got. Um, you probably have seen that review by now, but uh, I will also link that down below in case you're interested in that particular kit. It's by Be Crafty. And finally, you will need a 3.25 millimeter hook. I did go with a smaller hook than is recommended for this size yarn. The reason is I want it to be just a little bit stiffer. It's a loose stitch that I'm using, but um, it helps it be a little bit stiffer uh, for the bookmark. So um, again, that's a 3.25 millimeter hook. This is a clover hook. These are my favorite hooks. I do have those linked down below as well. And I will link to the individual hook as well, if I can, if I can find that link. All right, so why don't we go ahead and get started. I am creating this, assuming that you already know how to make a slip knot and a um, and chain. Uh, if you need me to do a more detailed uh, a video, on just the slip knot and chain, then let me know down below and I'll be happy to create that video for you. So let's go ahead and make your slip knot. And everybody, you can find uh, 20 different ways to make a slip, lot, a slip knot. So whatever works best for you. All right, now let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and chain 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now make sure you don't do it too tightly. It's real easy to do that with these smaller hooks. Um, so you just want to make sure that you chain ten loosely and then you want to do two more and that's going to be two more chains and that's going to be your first chain stitch to bring up the, um, bring up your row, your next row, bring it up to the next row. So let's do two, one, two, and then we're gonna double crochet in the third chain from the hook. Now some people tell you to, to use back loop or you know a specific look. It does look neater when you use a back loop. So do another do double crochet into the next chain. Um, it does look neater, but since we're putting the tassels on, not that important. Um, just go ahead and put that in there and put it in to each chain. Just make sure you say, use the same loop that you use throughout so that your, your bottom row doesn't get twisted. Your, your chain doesn't get twisted. Um, all right, so do another double crochet. 
And then you just want to continue to double crochet into each chain all across um, all across your first foundation chain. Okay, so now you have 11 stitches in your first row. So that is one stitch for your chain. And then you have 10 double crochet stitches. So you do want a total of 11 stitches in this first row. And that's gonna be the foundation for the rest of your work. All right, so let's go ahead and chain three. So it's one. Oh, missed it. Two and three. Okay, and then turn your work. Now, where this, uh, we're not gonna count as, you know, this is for the chain. This little section right here is for the chain. So when I say skip a stitch, you're skipping this stitch, not this stitch. So skip this stitch and go into this stitch, which looks like the third stitch, okay? So yarn over, skip one stitch, and go into the next stitch and then double crochet. Chain one, yarn over, skip one stitch, go into the second stitch and double crochet. Okay, chain one, yarn over, skip one stitch, go into the next stitch and double crochet. Okay. Chain one, yarn over, go to the second stitch. You wanna skip one stitch and then double crochet. Chain one, yarn over, and then you're going to double crochet in the top of the chain, which is for this row is this stitch right here and you're going to double crochet. All right, so that is the end of row two. So it's a little, you can't really see it, but it's gonna be like a little mesh stitch in between. And really that is the whole pattern. So you're gonna do double crochet and then, um, and then the mesh, mesh stitch. So it'll be three chain, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, all the way across until you double crochet into that last, uh, into your chain two. So let's go ahead and chain two and turn our work. So next we're going to double crochet into that chain space. Okay, yarn over, double crochet into the double crochet below. Yarn over, double crochet into the chain space. Yarn over, double crochet into the top of the double crochet below. Yarn over, double crochet into the chain space. Yarn over, double crochet into the double crochet below. Yarn over, double crochet into the chain space. Yarn over, double crochet into the chain below. Yarn over. Now this is, you had, you remember you did the chain three. So there is a chain for the chain space plus the two chains for the, begin, the start of the row. So go ahead and double crochet into the space. And then we're gonna chain, double crochet into the second chain, which is, if you take a look here, it's chain one and this is chain two, so this is where we're going to put our double crochet. Now I chain a little tightly, so that's why you get a little bit of a curl here, but this does work itself out. Um, what I could have done to help avoid this curl is use a slightly bigger hook. Uh, since we're using 3.25, I should have used a 3.75 to do the chain work and then and then worked up from that but um anyway when i get the, the get the tassels in then that that part works itself out so it's no big deal and all right so now you see how we're starting to repeat so that's double crochet the mesh the mesh row and then another double crochet row so now we're going to do another mesh row 
I'm gonna go ahead and do three more rows with you and then I want you to go off on your own and we're gonna have a total of 11 sets starting with this set right here. So it'll be 22 rows. So we're gonna meet back up again for the last row, but it's gonna be a total of 22 rows or 11 sets. So this is two rows here, one and two, and this is your first, your first set, okay? I'll explain that again here in a minute. Let's go ahead and do the next few rows. So we are on the mesh row, so let's go ahead and chain three one two three turn your work yarn over remember this this uh, stitch right here is really part of that chain so we're going to skip the next stitch which is this stitch right here and go into this stitch and double crochet chain one yarn over skip one stitch go into the next stitch and double crochet chain one yarn over skip the next stitch and go into the second stitch and double crochet chain one yarn over skip the next stitch go into the next one so skip that one go into the second one from your your double crochet and do another double crochet chain one, yarn over, and then you are going to go into the second chain, which is this one, and double crochet. Okay, so that is your first two sets of the bookmark. So that's set one and set two, and you're going to have a total of 11 sets. And of course, you can make this you know, shorter or longer, depending on your preference, whichever you prefer, you could do a few more if you wanted to always, you wanted to work with bigger books. But uh, for the, to match what I'm doing, you'll want a total of 11 sets. Okay, so let's go ahead and chain two. I will tell you that uh, oftentimes you'll find people when you're doing a double crochet row, they'll ask you to chain three as the first one. I prefer to chain two. It just makes it a little bit tidier here and you have less gaps on the end. Um, all right, so yarn over and we're going to double crochet into that chain space. Yarn over and double crochet into the double crochet below. Yarn over, double crochet into the chain space. Yarn over, double crochet into the double crochet below yarn over, double crochet into the chain space, yarn over, double crochet into the chain below, yarn over, double crochet into the chain space, yarn over, double crochet into the chain below, yarn over, double crochet into that space, and then yarn over, make sure you count up two chain spaces, so that's one and two, and then double crochet into that second chain space. And then chain three for the next row, and this is the last row that I'm gonna do with you guys. And I'll let you go off on your own to do all 11 sets or 22 rows. Um, so from here, that would be See, that would be 11, 10, and then this is nine. So you're gonna do eight more sets or 16 more reps. Okay, so yarn over. Again, um, just remember this first little space here. Uh, that is for your chain, because we're counting the chain as a stitch. And then you skip this next space, and you go into this space and do a double crochet. I love how the red mi is mixing in with that yellow, that gold there. All right. Then yarn over, or actually yarn over, yes. And then chain one, yarn over, skip one stitch, go into the next stitch, and do a double crochet. Chain one, yarn over, skip one stitch, go into the next stitch, and do a double crochet. Chain one, yarn over, 
skip one stitch, go into the next stitch, double crochet, chain one, yarn over, skip that stitch, and then go into the top of your chain two, and double crochet. All right, so, so this is your first three sets and you want another eight sets, eight more sets or 16 rows to finish to, and then we'll meet up at the end. Okay, so let's go ahead. You can go ahead and do the next eight sets or to, for a total of 16 rows and we'll meet up at the end. Okay, we're back and we have crocheted a total of 22 rows plus the chain, of course, and or 11 sets. So, and by sets, I mean these two rows because it's a two row repeater for this project. Um, so that's right there. Now, if you wanted to continue on and make this a little bit longer for you, then do um, these sets of twos but I would always end on a double crochet row. And the reason is for shaping. So if you take a look at this row, if I ended on this row, then you end up with this like where it's kind of pulled right here and it slants and it doesn't really square off. Whereas on this project, it's more squared off and it's better for the shaping, okay? So um, that's why I say always end on a double crochet row, which is what we're going to do next. Um, that is, this is going to be the final row of the project if you want it for the same size that I have it for. Um, and then we'll start on the, we'll weave in our ends and then we'll do the tassels. But if you want to make it longer, add a few more rows, but just end on that double crochet row. All right, so let's go ahead and chain two. Flip our work. Yarn over, we're gonna double crochet into the chain space. Yarn over, double crochet into the top of the double crochet below. Yarn over, double crochet into the chain space. Yarn over, double crochet into the double crochet below. Yarn over, double crochet into the chain space. Yarn over, double crochet into the double crochet chain or stitch below. Yarn over, double crochet into the chain space. Yarn over, double crochet into the stitch below. Yarn over, double crochet into that final chain space. And yarn over, and we're gonna double crochet into the second chain. So it's chain one, and then there's chain two. And we're going to push our needle in the middle of that, or our crochet hook, and double crochet into that chain two, or the second chain of the chain, the chain, turning chain. Okay, so that is the bulk of it. Now we're going to work on our tassels. So let's go ahead and fasten this off. And weave in your ends with your yarn, uh, with your yarn needles, and uh, and then I'll meet you back up so that we can make our tassels. Okay, welcome back. So let's go ahead and make some tassels. Uh, you should have weaved in your ends by now. So here is, and you can leave it. If you don't want the tassel on it, you can leave your bookmark just like this. Okay, there's no need to put the tassels on it. I personally like them. Um, you can also do one big tassel instead of a bunch of little tassels, you know, um, pull them together and have them come out of the middle and, and do one big tassel like you see on other bookmarks, you know. Um, but I like to, I like this little fringy thing going on right here with the tassel, the little mini tassels. Uh, one thing I do want to note is you want to make sure whenever you're doing um, this that you fasten off your tassels the same direction every time. So it's uniform on the row. See, that's one side. And this is the second side. So if we weren't, if I wasn't paying attention and making sure that I was pulling them, pulling the tassels through on the same side on both 
on the same side each time I did a tassel. And it looked a little funny because you see the difference in the looks between this side of the tassel, oops, sorry, and this side of the tassel. There's a very different look there. So just make sure that you're always pulling your tassels through on the same direction each time. Now, one thing you could do is if you're using a self-striping yarn like I have been, um, then one thing you could do is if you wanted to control the colorway, as you see, more than likely some of my tassels are going to be in this darker orange and then some of them are going to be in this yellow. And I could, if I wanted to, pull out the remaining of this yellow. If I wanted them all the dark to be the darker orange, pull out this remaining yellow and, and then snip off when it turns to orange so I can control the color that way. Um, I'm going to see how it works. I'm going to start making them and if I only have a couple of them in this orange, then I'll pattern them in a certain way whenever I start attaching the tassels to the end. You can eyeball your tassels or you can measure them out if you prefer to be exact, um, if you like the length that I have mine. So, uh, but, or you can just eyeball them and, and make them the length that you would like to have them be. Um, I like that. So whenever I made, I made these two, one right after the other. So this one I made first and it has the shorter tassels. And then this one, the tassels are just a little bit longer. And I kind of like the longer tassels for me personally. So what I'm going to do is make them close to that length, which these are roughly two inches in length, um, which means a total of four inches because I fold them over. That's how you make a tassel. So, uh, and I would do a little bit extra because you want to have the room to snip off the yarn. So I would go ahead and go with a uh, five inches, a five inch string each time. Um, I do not measure this exact each time. I'll measure one, two, I'll measure one to about five inches. If you are very particular and don't want to waste your yarn, then I would measure them all, all, all of your tassels that you're going to create out of, measure them out. I am less particular. Um, what you need, okay, so you know that you have, a, a, on the chains you have, I'm sorry, that's the top of it. So we're going to take a look at these chains. So we're going to be entering one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <coughs> Excuse me, total tassels on the bottom. And I use two of these strips of yarn for each tassel. Okay, so that means that we need, since it's ten, we need twenty strips of yarn. All right, so let's go ahead and cut off and get 20 strips of yarn. And then I will meet back up with you shortly. Okay, so now we have all of our little strands of yarn and our bookmark. And it just so happened that I there was plenty of yellow. I was wrong. Um, yeah, there was plenty of yellow before it started to turn to orange, which I'm probably going to pull out the rest of this yellow. There we go. And it started to turn to orange right about there. And I'm going to snip this off so I can control the color because that's not that much yellow to start another bookmark with. That's one thing I like about this striping bookmarks. You get very, or these striping yarns to use for the bookmarks is you get some very different um, bookmarks. Uh, by the time you get to it, you may get some all or this orange, all green, maybe a little bit of the orange and the green, a little bit of the blue and the red, but um, you end up with a very different look each time as far as the colorway goes. So let's go ahead and make some tassels. So we need to get two of these strands. I'm not going to do them all with you, but we're going to do a couple together. Now, what I like to do whenever I'm creating tassels is I want to get a bigger yarn hook. Here it is. So we've been using the 3.25 millimeter hook. And what I'm going to use is a four millimeter hook just to help me with the tassels. You don't have to do that. It's not necessary, um, but I do like to do that. All right, now I'm folding these in half and I almost wish I had made them about six to eight inches long instead of five inches long because I'm going to not have much room for trim. So there's not much room for error. So just a heads up if you want to make yours a little bit longer so you give yourself a little bit of room for error. All right, and I want to make sure I'm on my chain side, which is over here. And I like to do on the chain side because it kind of cleans that up. This is already pretty neat. 
you know, as far as the top end of your bookmark. So this, this just kind of hides the chain and which is why I said it didn't matter if you went into the back loop. If you went into the back loop, then you wouldn't have like this little ridge. It looked very neat on the bottom. But since, uh, since we're making these tassels, I'm just going to go on the chain side and do these tassels. So I put, I put my hook through and then pull through the two strands. Okay. I pull up a little bit extra. And then I, do, I usually go about two strands at a time and just pull them through like you would on a, when you're fastening off. All right, grab the other two here. And pull through there. And then all you need to do is just, you wanna be careful when you're tightening up so you don't wrap around the corner. So you wanna kind of a straight straight loop there so tighten it up and then there's your first tassel okay all right so we're gonna do that again grab two strands line them up okay fold them in half And we're going to go into the next loop or the next chain, pull through and up a loop. Then I grab two strands at a time. You could do four if you wanted. Pull through and then put my, my hook back through that loop if you only did two strands and then pull through this Look at that, I grabbed an extra strand, so I need to make sure I grab only my two strands. And then pull through. And then get this away from that one. And then we're gonna tighten this up. Okay, again, you wanna make sure that you continue to do these from the same side. So if you take a look at it, you see how you have the two crosses and then the, the back end of the loop is on this side. So just, you wanna make it consistent across the row. It looks neater that way. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do two more with you and then, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna leave you to finish it off on your own and then we'll come back at the end. So let's go ahead, match up two strands, fold them in half. Okay. Put your hook through. And with that one, so put my hook through here. Pull through. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and do all four this time. Pull through all four. And then let's tighten this up. Okay, and what, what I was doing there is kind of tugging a little bit over because when I did this one, it spaced out a little bit more between the, these were closer together than this. So I just kind of tugged on the knot a little bit to pull it over this way so that they're a little bit more evenly spaced across. Okay, so let's do one more and then um, you guys can finish off, finish the last few on your own. Okay, so line up your two strands. Fold in half. Go through the chain. Grab your two strands. Pull them up. And then pull all four strands through that loop that you pulled up. That, and then tighten up. And now you have four. So let's go ahead and uh, I will meet, meet up you, with you at the end for the trimming. Okay, so now you should have all of your fringe on and then as you look at it, you'll see, okay, it's not quite that even. Maybe you're a little bit more careful than me and you do have it very even already and you don't even need to trim it. But say that you are, um, 
at the end of your work and you see that it's not even, so you do need to trim it. So the way that you would do that is kind of like how somebody trims bangs. You pull them all together and then you run your scissors across here to make it as straight as possible without cutting the little meaty bits of your fingers. Okay? So that is much more even. And you can go in and trim a little bit more if you need to. Like sometimes I need to trim this last little one down here just a little bit because I always, to avoid snipping into this part of my hand, I always uh, cut that a little bit long. So, but now that's it. That is your bookmark. All done. Very easy, very quick. Um, some uh, basic stitches and you're good to go. These will make some great gifts um, uh, as for either birthday. If you give a book, then give a bookmark with it or even as stocking stuffers as we get closer to Christmas. But um, either way, I think that you'll really enjoy this bookmark and uh, use it for years to come. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to like this video if you really enjoyed this project and uh, found yourself uh, making, making it and plan on making some more. Um, also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you are reminded every time that I put out a new video. Um, again, I like to put out the stitch studies on Fridays and then on Wednesdays I put out a combination of either um, a, a product review, a yarn haul, or a regular tutorial, just like this one that you watched today and participated with. Thank you again. You guys have a wonderful day and I can't wait to see you again. Bye-bye.